As a proud Babson alum, I'm honored to be serving as your humble Master of Ceremonies for the 2019 Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs Gala and Induction Ceremony. We are here to celebrate the Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs, which was the first Global Entrepreneurship Hall of Fame, and induct the 2019 honorees. Since its inception in 1978, the Academy has inducted more than 100 entrepreneurial leaders who have transformed business and society for the better. Nominations of world-class entrepreneurial leaders who have created great economic and social value are solicited from the Babson community as well as from outside of the institution. Members of this Babson Academy have created millions of jobs and improved societies around the world. Their Thanks, Carrie. Their collective leadership shows how entrepreneurship has shaped the past and will transform the future with the help of the next generation. Many of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world are members of this prestigious academy. They represent companies that are some of the most highly regarded in their industry and household icons in their culture. These leaders have capitalized on the need for change, accepted the associated risk and responsibility, and have made an impact on the world. The energy and innovation embodied by these individuals will be appreciated and applauded for generations to come. Now, we will introduce you to some of these inspirational leaders, including some of us that are here with us this evening. It's more than just something you tell yourself in the mirror every morning. Being an entrepreneur means grabbing an industry and transforming it. Being an entrepreneur means you impact the world economically and socially. It doesn't matter where you come from or where you live. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. When you're an entrepreneur, the only thing that matters is heart and hustle and the relationships you build. It's taking risks when you have everything to lose. Because while some might shy away from the bold challenges that they're up against, the entrepreneurs of the world roll up their sleeves and ask themselves how it can be better. Since 1978, when the Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs was an idea developed by Babson College professor Jack Hornaday and Babson College president Ralph Sorensen, the Academy has honored and recognized entrepreneurs who have contributed to the development of free enterprise around the globe. If you're a member of this Academy, you've been part of a distinguished group that has created millions of jobs and changed the world for the better. You've sold iconic brands and brilliant products. Babson has fostered a unique community of individuals that champion ideas, new businesses, new opportunities, and a new economy. So, no matter the industry or the road that you choose to follow, the Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs proudly celebrates and honors the lives of those whose innovations have helped make our world a better place. What an impressive academy that is. It is now my honor to introduce Babson's 14th president, Stephen Spinelli. I get to brag about you for a minute before you take over. I get to hug you while you're doing it. <laughs> president Spinelli is the embodiment of entrepreneurial thought and action. Throughout his career in business and academia, he has simultaneously pursued and seamlessly integrated scholarship and practice. It's the back of the room. I'm not doing While building Jiffy Lou, he earned his MBA at Babson, followed by a PhD in economics from the Management School Imperial College at the University of London. He also served as ten, for 10 years as president of Philadelphia University. In addition to being Babson's president, he also serves on many boards, including Planet Fitness and Berwind. He is opportunity-obsessed and action-oriented, 
hallmarks of a great entrepreneur, but his work is underpinned by thoughtful and rigorous scholarship. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you very much. God bless you, Linda. Linda is one of those great alums that are just so much fun to have around and is so gracious and so welcoming. It is a pleasure to be here in Boston to bring Babson Connect worldwide back home to Boston and Wellesley. Thank you for being here today. This is a thrill. And thank you, thank you, Linda, again. You know, Linda never took my course when I was teaching, and I've never actually forgiven her until tonight because she, we wrote all those comments and said nice things about me. And I'm convinced you would have uh, gotten an A in my class if you had taken my class. We're really here tonight to shine a spotlight on the transformative power of entrepreneurs to change the world for the better. It is not about a process, it's about people, and it's about people solving problems. For more than four decades, the Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs has recognized and honored entrepreneurs who have contributed significantly to the development of free enterprise throughout the globe. Nearly two years ago, with our centennial on the horizon, Arthur Blank penned a letter to the fellow Academy members inviting them back to Babson College for this event. This evening, I am pleased to welcome 20 returning members of the Academy, leaders who have embodied the entrepreneurial spirit that makes Babson so wonderful and imbues that spirit in our students. If you're a member of our Academy, would you stand up and allow us to thank you again for how wonderful we, you are and the example you give to our students. Rise up, entrepreneurs. We love you dearly. The, more, the world needs entrepreneurship more than ever. The pace of change in the world and the workplace is accelerating, and every industry is being disrupted. Disruption and change can create opportunities for entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship. The qualities and skills that entrepreneurial leaders possess, opportunity obsession, I love that phrase, growth orientation, nimble, are the qualities and skills that the evolving nature of work and the hyper-network global economy require. We can serve the entire economy. No longer is entrepreneurship just for a niche set of people. It is a requirement for everyone. Members of the Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs, through their expertise and impact, are leading change. And this evening, we are adding to your ranks welcoming Nurj Shah and Steve Conine, co-founders of Wayfair, and Eric Johnson, president and CEO of Baldwin Richardson Foods, to the Academy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please turn your attention to the screen for our inductees. I'm Stephen Conine, one of the co-founders of Wayfair. Nerd Shaw, the other co-founder of Wayfair. When I think about entrepreneurship, I think about the excitement of creating something, focusing on a set of customers, really providing incredible value to them with a product or service in a way that allows you to build a business from scratch. It's your hard work and your effort that allows you to create the thing you build. We have a, a culture at Wayfair that I think is very growth learning oriented. And you know, we encourage people to try things, to fail, to learn from that, and to continue to improve over time. And if you're gonna drive innovation and you're gonna drive improvement, I think entrepreneurship is a great mechanism for that. When I went to college almost 30 years ago, entrepreneurship wasn't thought of as a career option broadly that folks could pursue. And what's exciting is that now entrepreneurship is much more widely understood as a real opportunity. In fact, something that you can study and something that you can really pursue and people are encouraged to do that. If you think about Babson's role in that, it really was, was on the forefront of that. Things like the Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs, it just recognizes that this is a legit career and it's something that people should be encouraged and excited about going after. My advice would be do it now. If you have an idea, you're passionate about something, have focus, do it now.
Nurj and Steve, would you please join us on the stage? Congratulations and welcome to the Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs. Thank you all so very much. Um, so we were told we had three minutes, and so we thought, well, we know what to say in 20 seconds, and we know what to say in about 60 minutes. We're at three minutes. <laughs> it was impressive they actually gave you the mic, Doc. <laughs> um, you know, I guess first I, I would just say, you know, thanks, um, thanks to Babs, and this, it's, it, this is really nice recognition. Uh, they, they are an, a, an amazing organization who has seen that entrepreneurship really matters in the world and have invested in it for a very long time. And so it, it is an honor to be up here getting this recognition. Um, you know, I'd say thanks to the Wayfair team and all the Wayfair alumni that have been part of this experience with us. Um, it's been an amazing journey uh, over the last 17 years building Wayfair. Um, and the team that we have put together has been a, a huge part of it. Um, I'll tell you one funny personal anecdote I was, trying to, I was thinking about when we, were, when we were prepping for this. So in 78, when they started this program, I was six. And when I looked at all the, the inductees on that list, when I was a kid, you know, kids like sports figures and they idolized, you know, different people in their lives. The idols in my life were entrepreneurs. And when I look at the list that, that are on the list of distinguished entrepreneurs, they were my idols as a kid. And it is really humbling to be up here on stage and actually be part of that, uh, of that group of individuals. And so um, it's... Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, it's been, it's, it's Well, really and then a couple of things I just want to add before I, because I know we need to go, is just, um, I think it's important to note that Babson was the first college to really embrace entrepreneurship as a field of study. And I think that's a big deal because today there's hundreds of colleges and it's actually a very attractive field of study. And the notion of pioneering that, well, Babson was the entrepreneur focusing on entrepreneurship. And I think that's fantastic. And, and just thank you very much for honoring us. We appreciate that. But, but, but frankly, we're excited about just what we do and being a part of the ecosystem. And thank you very much for uh, coming tonight. Thank you. I love you, man. Thank you. Thank you, my brothers. Now I am pleased to introduce one of our own a Babson alum, a trustee, a parent, and a personal friend, Mr. Eric Johnson. Please turn your attention to the screen. I'm Eric Johnson, President and CEO of Baldwin Richardson Foods. I think that responsibility is a part of anyone's success. For entrepreneurs, I think it's even magnified because we are accountable for ourselves and if we're successful, for others. Roger Babson felt that entrepreneurs and business people had an obligation to give back to the community and to be philanthropic, and I don't think that's changed. We at Baldwin Richardson Foods, for example, support a four-year scholarship to Babson College and to other schools to help students achieve success in their life. In our business, we believe that diversity adds to the quality of the decision-making that we do. And entrepreneurs certainly are people that embrace that very heartily. I think the main thing that the Academy does is it is a great example of what entrepreneurial efforts really mean in terms of independent thinking and the ability to take ownership and accountability of a situation. The world clearly needs that today and will continue to need that into the future. My friend, Mr. Eric Johnson, would you please join us on the stage? Congratulations and welcome to the Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs. Thank you very much. We love you, man. Thank you. President Spinelli, 
former President Healy. We also have Brian Barefoot and Ralph Sorensen in the room, members of the Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs, members of Babson Worldwide Connect, and Babson's faculty, staff, and students. It is a great honor for me to stand here before you tonight as an inductee into this extraordinary group of business leaders. My life has been blessed with many incredible sets of opportunities, people, and events. I was born into a family where my parents were first-generation entrepreneurs. My mother, Joan Johnson, who recently passed away, along with my father, George, created Johnson Products Company, the makers of Ultrasheen, Afrosheen, and used the marketing vehicle, Soul Train, to expose our brands to a national audience. The company became the first African-American-owned company to ever be traded on the American Stock Exchange. So I was fortunate to see up close and personal the trials and tribulations and the sacrifices required to be an entrepreneur. I will add that my father is also a recipient of the Babson Medal. So in high school, I asked my college counselor, what is the best business school in the country? And she said, Babson College, but you don't need to apply. Now, I don't really know what she meant by that because I never saw her again in my life. But I went home that evening and I told my parents, I'm going to Babson College. So I came to Babson College in 1968, a year that has become the focus of a lot of documentaries because it was a catalyst for change that culminated in 1971 with student protests and school closures, even at Babson. The issues of war, civil and human rights, gender equality, and racism set a path that continues till today, a period that shaped the values in my life. In 1971, another incredible event. I was the student representative to the management department, and I worked with Dr. John Hornaday on the concept of training in entrepreneurial education. And it was questioned, was there a foundation that made this a teachable concept? There were many doubters in academia that believed it was not a credible curriculum, but never John, and the rest is history. In short, I had all the potential ingredients to become an entrepreneur but it was the training and exposure that I received at Babson that gave me the real confidence to move forward on my own. I did take over that family business. And Johnson Products on the day that I became president had about 60 days worth of cash, had financing at prime plus four, had the employees had taken a 15% pay cut, and our stock was trading at $2.50 and I was as happy as I could possibly be. <laughs> because I knew that if I could turn this business around, it would never be because I was the president of the owner. In two years, Johnson Products stock was at $26. Yeah. We had a 30% improvement in factory and productivity. We were the seventh best performing stock on the American Stock Exchange in 1991, and we got the American Management Turnaround Award. I think Babson does a pretty good job. <laughs> and with all that, you would think I'm a happy camper. For reasons to this day I do not know, I was not. And I decided I really wanted to run my own business. So I left a job where I made almost a half a million dollars a year, and I bought an ice cream company with a little over two and a half million dollars in sales. And I remember leaving the closing that night thinking, this is my entry into Baldwin Foods Company. So over the next four years, that business quadrupled, 
and in 1997, when Quaker Oats decided to exit from the food service businesses, one of the businesses that was sale, for sale was called Richardson Foods. Now, I had an ice cream company, and they made ice cream toppings. They also had condiments, and they were a McDonald's supplier. And being from Chicago, I had once met Ray Kroc, and I actually had talked to people at McDonald's about our ice cream. So once the transaction was completed, we were now a $38 million business, and we had production facilities in Rochester, New York, with our offices in Chicago. In 2001, we began a relationship with the Kellogg Company to produce Nutrigrain bar fillings for all of North America. In 2005, by that time we were about 105 million. We had the opportunity to buy the Industrial Products Division from J.M. Smucker Company. And by 2010, when we were roughly 140 million, we started the coffee syrup business for McDonald's. Today, Duncan Brands, which is the hometown favorite, we began producing products for them in 2012, and today we make the majority of all their coffee syrups. Our business today is roughly $275 million in sales. And if you had a flavored coffee today, there's a greater than 50% chance that you drank one of our products. Last year, we made 264 million pounds of food and we only have 340 employees. And quality of our employees, training our employees, is the most critical thing that we do because my children and your children eat our products every day. And the quality that we need and the quality that we maintain is essential for our business. We're a family-owned business. Many people here know my son, John, who was from the class of 2008 and is a current member of the Board of Trustees. He could not be here this evening because as I said earlier, my mother passed away recently. He took some days off. He was just finishing his training program at William Blair. And so we decided it was better for him to not attend this since he's got a board meeting coming up also. Erin Tolfrey, my daughter, is our executive vice president. She's been with us for 19 years and runs our day-to-day -day operations. I also have a daughter, Cara, who's involved in our business. And she runs all of our sales development and all of our customer contacts. And my fourth daughter, Lucretia, has never been in the family business, but she's been very successful in the fashion industry. And my partner, Donna, who I depend on on a day in and day out basis, keeps me on target for all the things that I have to do. Our company supports many worthy causes, but none is more important than the annual four-year full tuition scholarship that we provide to Babson College and to Spelman College. We want to see entrepreneurs and successful professionals continue to flourish and to make this world a better place. I offer my most sincere thanks and gratitude for this honor and hope to be a part and an inspiration to the success of future awardees. Thank you. Well, I, I just said to Eric, he's been an inspiration to me for the last 25 years. Well, congratulations to all our members of the Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs, past and present. We love you dearly. Tonight, we are also honoring a leader who has dedicated her life to creating social impact. Join me in welcoming Cheryl Kaiser, Executive Director of the Lewis Institute at Babson College, who will present the 2019 Centennial Social Impact Award to Erica Karp, CEO of Cornerstone Capital. Good evening. Today I am Today I am honored to present the 2019 Lewis Institute Centennial Social Innovator Award to a remarkable person who's making an impact around the world. Social Innovator Awards recognize individuals who have set in motion transformative change, 
They challenge the status quo and the positive disruptors in their industry or sector. They change mindsets, they create new frameworks, and they influence beliefs, all in service to creating a more just and sustainable world. Erica Karp has done just that. In 2018, Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, the largest investment bank in the world, with nearly $7 trillion under management, sent a letter to CEOs saying, contribute to society or risk losing our support. Companies must ask themselves, what role do we play in the community? How are we managing our impact on the environment? Larry Fink is correct, but very few know what actually to do with that statement. He is not talking about corporate social responsibility. He's talking about transforming the very purpose of capital and business. Our evening honoree understands the complexity and the urgency behind Larry Fink's letter. Erica Karp is an entrepreneur and change maker who founded her company Cornerstone Capital Group to catalyze the flow of capital towards a more regenerative and inclusive global economy. She is relentless about optimizing investment performance through rigorous research that systematically integrates environmental, social, and government factors into portfolio design. As one of the top thought leaders in the changing world of investing, Erica knows just how difficult it is to assess an investment's impact and how challenging it is to do it in a way that is both meaningful and translatable. This is a huge breakthrough because dilemmas, I'm sorry, Sorry, sorry. As Peter Drucker said, what gets measured gets done. If you are going to advance the UN global goals, you need a framework to measure your progress. And Cornerstone Capital has created one of the most innovative, uh, innovative and accessible measurement tools called the Access Impact Framework, a heat map for investors which shows how their money measures up to their goals, whether it is invested in individual companies or funds. Erica believes that numbers alone don't allow us to be visceral. It doesn't allow things to be visceral. Her company purposefully avoided using a numerical scale because the heat map would reach people on a more direct, deeply felt human level. This is a huge breakthrough because dilemmas like climate change, affordable and quality education, eradicating poverty, accessing clean water and health, and gender equality are overwhelming. She and her firm convert the feeling of being overwhelmed into a strategy that allows investors to feel, think, and act on their good values. As Erica says, if you can't move people, you can't move money. Investing in social progress and solving the great challenges of our time is complex and takes patience. And yet our challenges are immediate. This requires new understandings, break, breaking down silos, new forms of collaborative relationships, and radically practical investing. President Spinelli has stated that the world needs Babson now more than ever. We also need courageous innovators like Erica Karp, who is living into her belief that the entrepreneurial mindset, rooted in ethics and sustainability, and driven by human values, is the mindset we need to navigate uncertainty, solve the global problems we face, and create a better world. It is an honor to present Erica with the 2019 Centennial Social Innovator Award. Please join me in welcoming Erica to the stage. This is awesome. <laughs> um, this is awesome. It feels so good. And uh, Cheryl commented about moving people so we can move money. And I have to tell you, people 
um, may, uh, they, they won't remember what you said, and they really won't remember what you did, but they will remember how you made them feel. And this, this feels really good. That's a quote from Maya Angelou, who is one of the most beautiful poets we've ever known. And, um, and it's so right, she had so much courage and so much wisdom. And um, when you think about wisdom, um, I think of a, um, this is a Talmudic scholar, uh, Abraham Isaac Heschel. Heschel said that it is not doubt, but it's wonder that leads to wisdom, wonder. And I think that's also what leads to entrepreneurship. Wonder and principles. And um, when I was a little kid, I think I was five years old, and my dad, who was a securities lawyer, um, I heard him he was talking on the phone with a client, and they were talking about some transaction, and my dad hung up the phone, and he looked at me, and he said, he said, Erica, he said, the, the stock market, the capital markets are so beautiful and wonderful because on your word, on your honor, you can transact millions of dollars in business on your honor. And so I was five years old and I knew from that moment I was going to be a stockbroker. I had no idea what a stockbroker was, but I knew I was going to be one. <laughs> so anyway, I was always meant to study economics, and I did. And you know, I, my father got to see about half of my career on Wall Street. I've been on Wall Street for about uh, 30 years. And I never forgot his view of honor. And I saw a lot in the capital markets that was not honorable. That said, I also learned an enormous amount. And so I try to mix the, the, the wonder of a, the good form of capitalism um, with the creativity um, uh, that I can find in transforming capitalism of today to a form that's more inclusive and regenerative. And so I always wonder what would it be like if my children and grandchildren did get to see polar bears? What would it be like if we had oceans that did have more fish than they do plastics? What would it be like if we are not in an accelerating sixth great extinction? What would it be like if we had a world, a circular economy, where we had no even, not even a concept of waste? All right, we can do this. The technologies are here. The capital is here. It's a question of connecting them. It's a question of making people know you can invest, you can get competitive economic returns, and at the same time, you can wonder and do what we know we can do in a better system, one where we have transparency. So a form of capitalism that is conscious, a form of capitalism that is intentional, a form of capitalism that is not extractive, all right? We can't do it by moving millions or billions. We need to move trillions. And so we do need to change capitalism. And I know that when it comes to being disruptive, certainly on Wall Street, you can do it quietly, you can do it from the inside, you can do it as far as you can, but once you start to feel urgency, impatience, actual terror at the climate crisis that we're in, then you have to decide, okay, I'm gonna disrupt from the outside. And that's, I think, what makes an entrepreneur. And somebody said to me, Erica, you're going to start a company, um, you better do it before you're 50. Got it done, I was 49 and a half, <laughs> thank God. But um, I will tell you that for me, um, being an entrepreneur has been like jumping out of a plane and building the parachute on the way down. <laughs> Fortunately, 
I think we've got a strong parachute. We are a very new company. We're effectively a startup, but we have something to say. And so I hope that my company, um, I hope we always have a voice that is far larger than the company itself because we have something to say. So this is a really great honor. So thank you very much. Thank you all for being here tonight. Special thanks to all of our sponsors, the Advisory Committee, the Babson Advisory Committee, and the Host Committee for making Babson Connect Worldwide 2019 a, re a reality. I am thrilled to announce that next year, Babson Connect Worldwide 2020 will be held in Panama City, Panama. Let me tell you, people in Panama know to have, how to have fun. <laughs> Lupo Del Bono is leading the charge as committee chair and welcoming Babson College to Panama. Lupo, would you join me on, on stage? Did we go too far? <laughs> um, we, I could have screwed this up. <laughs> you can have one. I'm coming back later. Oh, I'm coming back. Yeah, we're coming. No, no, we're going to. We can do it now. Do yeah, let's do it now. <laughs> yeah, do it now. <laughs> you know, guys, this is a surprise. We should have done this at the end with the cognac and everything else. <laughs> but what I want to tell you is that the most dramatic game changer in our time has been for sure the internet, opening conduits to global connectivity. 100 years ago, the ingenuity, the ambition, and the innovation of the United States built the Panama Canal, opening the floodgates to global connectivity. And I will take you to the Panama Canal in five months' time. Both Panama and Babson are 100 years old. Today, when most of our world is building walls, when most of our world are closing boundaries, both Panama and Babson continue to think globally. This year, in 2019, Panama hosted uh, Pope Francisco's celebrating the Global uh, Youth Day, and we hosted 200,000 pilgrims. This was just a booth camp for Babson Connect 2020. So I'll be waiting all of you there. Don't miss it. What a great, what an exciting announcement and how wonderful to celebrate entrepreneurship that we've, like we've been doing today where we've welcomed three incredible entrepreneurs to this distinguished academy and we honored the incredible social impact of Erica. Now, I, as I promised, you have time now to enjoy dinner and meet the wonderful people at your table. We'll be back in a little bit. Thank you. So now it is my pleasure to welcome to the stage the chair of our Global Advisory Board, Cyril Camus. Thank you, thank you. All right, so, ladies and gentlemen, All right, I have the great honor to raise our glass, or my glass, 
with you tonight in honor of Mass and Centennial. Now, to do that, I will start by trying the first thing I've learned at Babson, which was to go shh, and it does work. All right. Um, back in 1919, 27 students embarked on the first class ever taught at Babson, and they had pledged that by the time they would graduate, they would embark on a career in business with the goal of bringing positive value to humanity, to have a career that would be of service to humanity. And that's what Basson's been doing ever since. Today we say it differently. Basson's mission is to educate leaders that will create social and economic value everywhere. And Babson has certainly been doing this for the past 100 years. The product we, we're holding now, the, my cognac is definitely a product of the land. I am definitely a product of Babson. From Babson, I've learned to take... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Babson's given me the confidence and has given me the tools to take my 150-year-old company and not only manage it in a way that makes it the last surviving family-owned company in my industry, um, surviving as a family-owned business, but actually the fastest growing one. But what has been most important to me is that it's at Babson that I also learned the importance of the triple bottom line, that it wasn't just about the economic value, it is actually from one of our trustees, Hamon, during one of his speeches at Babson Connect that really impacted me when he mentioned this notion of triple um, bottom line. And I'm very glad to say that because of those values that are instilled by Babson, I have the first certified um, high environmental value vineyards in my industry. And it is because of the notion of creating social value um, that I've run my company in, in a way that is devoted to, to this and, and that allowed me to be, to be recognized by my government as, as one of the leaders in that particular field. But this is nothing compared to what can be done. <laughs> uh, it, 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 it's not me that, that should be applauded. It is the fact that thanks to Babson, I'm only one here amongst 800 people to have done this. All of us in this room, we are creating economic and social value everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So. so as Babson is getting ready to embark on its next 100 years, I would like us to recognize the work and the contribution of the past and present leaders of the school, of the faculty, of the staff of the school, and all the alumni around the world that are making this school the most amazing institution. So if I could please ask you to stand up. And let's raise our glass to the next 100 century, 100 years of Babson creating economic social value. To Babson! Yes. Yes. Cheers! Yeah. Thank you. That is, was an extraordinary toast, and this is an extraordinary drink. Thank you. Can I please have um, President Spinelli and the Boston Advisory Board and Host Committee please come to the stage, please. We're gonna... We have the Boston Advisory Board. Could we have the Boston Advisory Board and the Host Committee come onto the stage so we could take a picture and memorialize your leadership? And while we're all standing, why not? Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for being here this week at Babson Connect Worldwide.
the Academy of Distinguished Entrepreneurs, the centennial celebration of Babson College, the wonderful gathering of people who make a difference in the world. Bless you and bless Bob Babson College for the next 100 years. Thank you.